I know you really want that tribal armband, but I think that you should get a dragon. All right. Got what I need. Gloss. Give me a keg of beer. Remember Teen Wolf? Of course. <laughs> Give me a keg of beer. <laughs> ah! The fuck you want, man? Don't fight it! <laughs> Go to sleep. 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 You're getting very sleepy. I suffered for a long time in New York City with uh, living conditions that I thought were below my standards. Everything's in boxes. I got way too much shit for the amount of space that I have, you know? Um, I did that for a long time, you know? Like, now I'm ready to be grown up to a certain degree. How you doing, bro? What's up, buddy? What's up, homie? I really enjoy being a host, and I really enjoy taking care of people, you know? And th that extends to my friends and the, the people who work with me. We got like 10 pounds of Korean short ribs coming. So that and hot dogs, I wanted to have like some, just some, some sort of seafood so people don't feel left out. I know how sensitive people get about food. <laughs> I had no concept of any kind of international food. I didn't have like sushi or anything like that until I was in my 20s. My father's a truck driver, so everything that we ate kind of fell off a truck somewhere. You know, like whether it be Campbell's Soup or like Jimmy Dean's, you know. My mom would make it work. But I, I really love cooking. I love the culture of food. You better not grab me, motherfucker. Ah! <laughs> Today we are serving bloody crab. <laughs> Sasha, Troy, pleasure to meet you. Sable, pleasure to meet you, Troy. My whole life I've been interested in, you know, Asian culture in general. Definitely, like, the aspects of Japanese tattooing and Japanese culture that I've always had a, a fondness for is the ideas of duty and, and honor and knowing your job and doing your job, not complaining about it. You know, the reality may be totally different, but when I was a kid, that's what I bought. Do you want to help me make hot dogs? No. <laughs> you don't have a hot dog making outfit on, for sure. <laughs> I think Japanese people get a kick out of Troy a lot because Troy tries so hard to give them a kick so that he can speak his little bit of Japanese, so he can show them his knowledge, so he can talk about, you know, samurais or whatever crazy shit that he likes to talk about. <laughs> yeah, uh, he always asks me a bunch of silly questions about, about Japanese, but... Um, like what? I don't know. You know, how do you say stupid word, this kind of stuff in Japanese? Do you have a samurai momo? Do you miss your momo? <laughs> he already had a bunch of knowledge about Japan. You know, he already already into a Japanese culture. Tattoo, of course. This is this is the book right here. Tamatsu Koronama Horyoshi II. What's that? this tattooer apart from everybody else is that he'd achieved so much with there no real precedent. You have to have like perspective of the timeline. You can't judge somebody's work that's like 40 years old against something that came later. These guys already did all the hard work. They made all the mistakes, you know, already. I mean, he just kind of invented and codified this whole style himself, you know, which I, blows my mind. I really tried to understand this stuff, you know, on a greater level. It's taken me a long time to kind of refine my style and uh, really get stuff looking the way that I want it to. This was when I started doing more of the specifically Japanese style stuff. This is like 96. My earliest attempts at doing these type of tattoos, I approached them definitely from like Western illustrative perspective. You have this bag of tricks of effects that you're used to using in every tattoo to make something pop or like to get the desired result. I had to really step back and learn how to make stuff a little more flat 
and a little more readable and just let it stand on the strength of the design itself. Years later, I'm always definitely more pleased with the outcome if I didn't attach a bunch of bells and whistles to it. Troy, he always says things like that, that you may know it or you don't, but the way he articulates it out of the blue just creates sort of an epiphany for you. One day he even said, I'm going to stop looking at tattoos. I'm going to start looking at, you know, old prints and stuff. You know, if we're going to use a Japanese subject matter, um, I want to see what it's about and not look at it filtered through, you know, the eyes and hands of 10 different tattoo artists. This is a really fun one. It's like a Shoki Bishamon 10 riding a tiger. I've looked a lot at like old Kawanabe Kyosai for all the detail in the armor and stuff. He knows a lot of the mythology story behind of the Japanese tattooing. <clears throat> so, yeah, that made me feel like like an idiot that I had to know better about Japanese stuff. I used to hate people asking me doing Japanese stuff just because I'm Japanese. So I was like, fuck this, I'm not doing Japanese stuff. But after I started walking here, I, I totally changed my mind because the guy walks here taking super seriously the Japanese style. So I was kind of embarrassed. That's how I started more doing Japanese stuff. I was so nervous when I started walking here though. I just wanted to do some tattoo that I want him to say, wow. So I was just trying every day so hard. Did that moment ever come? That moment will come, yeah, but it took me a couple of years probably. <laughs> oh, damn. Ah, oh, damn. Kiku is probably one of the most talented tattooers in the world, and he's just an amazing person. He's the kind of people that, like, I can't see him without smiling. I hear his voice, it just makes me happy. He just has such a great spirit, and he's just such a great, kind person. You know, working with him has been one of the high points of my career, for sure. Are you filming a meeting? Oh Hold up each piece of food and say what it is in Japanese. <laughs> Kiku's like Troy's little buddy. They just kind of have this crazy little energy <laughs> that no one else in the shop really has besides them. You know, like Troy will just yell something in Japanese and then Kiku will yell it back. And now, mind you, they're across an entire shop, so they're basically just yelling over people left and right. Okay, so nobody wants a chicken, yeah? Nobody wants a chicken! <laughs> <laughs> And you know, Troy will always just like play certain songs for Kiku and like, Kiku will never not give positive reinforcement. So Troy loves having Kiku around because it's a constant audience. <laughs> I hate this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this thing. It's kind of a weird kind of coming to America type of situation with Kiku and I because I'm always explaining stuff to him. Like one day he goes, uh, troy what is a barbarian? I was like, I don't know, you know, barbarian's like a, you know, like an uncivilized savage person. He goes, oh, because at a Dunkin' Donuts, they have the barbarian cream donut. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, that's fucking bar Bavarian cream, dude. It's totally different. <laughs> He's like, well, what's the difference? I was like, well, the barbarian cream is like something, like a name of a porno movie or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally different. So it's like funny little idiosyncrasies like that and like little English language uh, faux pas. Or the, that keeps me, keeps me laughing throughout the day. Have you roll with us or? Yeah. yeah. The Troy and me loves karaoke, so uh... <laughs> yeah, we can't we can't stop singing. Me and Troy, especially Troy though. Oh shit, Axel Rose, you gotta sing like a snake dance, like Axel. You gotta do the snake dance. This is the big time, baby. This is rock and roll. <laughs> Grab a mic, motherfucker. <laughs> Kiku and I like to do karaoke. He's big on the Michael Jackson and I'm more of a either gangster rap or rock and roll type of person. Me and him can go back and forth. It's usually me and him fighting over the mic. You can tell they've been working together a long time. It's all love, you know, everyone, you know. It's all family here. And it feels like it's just a very warm environment. Bring him out, bring him out. Nice. Bring him out, bring him out. Troy's everything. He does it all but manages to still be one of the best. Yeah, New York City, you're not rocking with the best. If I got into this business just to work my ass off and constantly worry about my standing, 
in the you know the world at large that wouldn't be any fun at all i got into tattooing because i thought it was a platform to just completely be your own person just live life on your own terms the payoff comes from being able to work really hard feeling like you really have uh, challenged yourself and you've really put in an honest day's work and then being able to reap the rewards of all of that Thank you.